Chapter 1, An Introduction to Statistics. The first thing we need to know about statistics is that it is in no way Algebra 3. So we are starting from scratch somewhat and will therefore have to learn a lot of new terminology and perhaps adjust our thinking about how to approach a statistics class. Sometimes in algebra we can memorize things to get by. But in statistics, it is vital that our focus be on understanding what is going on. And the good news is, we will never have a hard time answering the question, when is this stuff ever used in the real world? So just a quick summary of that opening paragraph. This really is not a continuation of the algebra class you just came from. And I've seen lots of students in algebra classes get lost on the concepts, not really understand how things work, but just memorize steps, rules, procedures, and still pass the class. But I haven't really seen that in lots of years of passing or of teaching statistics. I've seen people get lost and try and memorize, but it usually just doesn't work out. So it's real important to remember that if you start to get confused on what's going on or why we do a certain procedure, you should come into office hours or the STEM Center and ask about it. Uh, don't try and just memorize things. And uh, kind of watch out because at the beginning it seems like you could memorize things, but as the class gets deeper and deeper, that gets you in more and more trouble. But the good news really is with this class, you'll see lots of real life applications that, that you believe and uh, you really see the use of this class as we continue through. All right, let's start jumping into the actual section, section 1.1, Descriptive and Inferential Statistics. There are two main branches of statistics we will study in this class. The first is descriptive statistics, which is methods for organizing and summarizing data so that it is easier to read and understand. And this can involve summary calculations or creating tables, charts, graphs, etc. to illustrate the information. So, for example, we might do the average age of a group of siblings. So that would be an example of a summary calculation. You have the age of maybe several brothers and sisters and you say what the average age is. That would be a summary calculation. Creating tables, an example of that might be like a win-loss table for sports. So if you wanted to know how your favorite basketball team was doing, uh, you could just look that up online and there would be a table of standings that said how many wins and losses they have. There probably would be a summary calculation, like a winning percentage there. They would have done that for your team, for all the games they've played this year, but also for all the other teams they compete against, and then they'd probably have it organized from top to bottom. And if you think about it, that might be hundreds of games worth of data, but they've got it all kind of summarized for you in an easy-to-read way. So those are examples of descriptive statistics. The other main branch of statistics is called inferential statistics, but to get that we need a couple other quick definitions. So a population is the group of people or things we will state conclusions about in our study. And a sample is that part of the population from which data is collected. And in inferential statistics, we're learning methods of drawing conclusions about a population based on information obtained from a sample. So some examples of where we might do that would be opinion polls, testing lasting times of light bulbs, things like that. So the most common form of an opinion poll is an election poll where they go out and ask somebody who are you planning on voting for. Uh, and you know, it could be pretty expensive to go out and ask everybody in the population, so they might just use a sample to get an estimate. And same thing with testing the lasting time of light bulbs. Maybe they're making, you know, hundreds of thousands of these light bulbs, and to test them, they have to burn them out. So they might just use a sample to get an estimate of the average lasting time of a light bulb. 
So in descriptive statistics, we're just stating a conclusion about the people that we got our data from, but in inferential statistics, we're collecting data from a sample and expanding those conclusions out to some larger population. So let's go ahead and test that idea with an example. If I obtained the ages of all the students in our class and I computed the average age, would that be an example of descriptive or inferential statistics? So you want to think about that real quick. Maybe even write your answer down. So you're kind of committed. You've got a side. Let me go ahead and write the answer. So I always do it in class, get that first letter, and if you wrote inferential, you think you've got it right, but it turns out the answer is it depends. Because you can't tell just based on what people did with the data, what type of statistics they're doing. Like if all you know is they computed an average, that's not enough. You have to know why they computed an average. So let's look at the two kind of situations we could be in. If I simply report the average age of this class to you, then this class is the population of interest and it would become a descriptive study because I collected data from this class and then I'm only stating my conclusion about this class so I'm just describing the people that I collected data from by doing a numerical summary. Now if I use the average age from this class as an estimate for the average age of all STAT students at Chabot, then this class is just a sample and it would become an inferential study. So it's important to notice that in both cases we're computing an average, which sounds like descriptive work, but if I only make that conclusion about the people I collected data from, they're a population and it's descriptive work, but if I expand that conclusion out to a bigger group beyond where I collected the data, then this class is just a sample and it becomes inferential. So you can't just look at the kind of work that's being done but you have to look at, is it just describing the people we collected data from, or are we expanding it out to some larger group? And we'll see some more examples of that on the next page, which will hopefully add a little bit more clarity. So let's look at some examples of classifying statistical studies as either descriptive or inferential. A researcher is interested in the milk production of dairy cows. She measures the volume per day from 40 cows chosen from various farms around the country. She will use her data to estimate the average milk production per day for dairy cows. Are the 40 cows the population or just a sample? So the key is not what she's doing. She's computing an average, right? But what is she computing it for? It's for all dairy cows in general. And she only has a sample of 40 cows. So the 40 cows are just a sample. So if she's taking a sample of 40 cows, expanding that out to dairy cows in general, then she's doing inferential work. Let's look at another example. A car salesman that works on commission is asked to state his monthly income during the last year for a credit card application. Because his income varies greatly from month to month, he decides to use the average of the 12 months during that year. I think that's a pretty good choice on his part, right? He might have some months where he sells a lot and others where he doesn't sell that many or maybe even no cars in a month. So he might have great months and bad months, but the credit card company wants to know about his ability to pay. So when they ask how much does he make per month, giving the average is probably a pretty fair way to do it. So are the 12 months the population or just a sample? Well, they asked for his monthly income from last year, and he's using all 12 months. So he's got the entire year's worth of data there. So when he computes that average, he's just describing his year, and it would be population data that he has. So all 12 months out of the year, so population data. And then using the computation of the average, just to summarize that data that he collected, not to expand it out to something bigger, so it would be descriptive statistics. And I said inferential work here, that's fine, but really statistics as well too. So it was inferential statistics was the type of work they were doing. Another thing worth noting on this last problem is that it can be a little bit tricky when you're describing whether it is a sample or a population, 
because the way it's worded, I think we've answered this correctly. It's a population and he's doing descriptive statistics. But if you think about it, why is the credit card company asking him for his monthly income? It's so that they can estimate his ability to pay for this card in the future. So from their point of view, those 12 months are just a sample of his future earnings. And they're trying to do inferential statistics to think about his ability to pay in the future. So it really does depend what's being done with the data. Um, from the point of view of this car salesman, he's just describing last year and he had data from the whole year. So the way we answered is correctly done there. So the key to the previous problems is to consider whether you're just stating conclusions about the group you collect data from, in which case you're doing descriptive statistics, or are you stating conclusions about a larger group, in which case it becomes inferential. And just to try and make that visual for you a little bit, we have kind of our participants in the study. And we collect data from them. And then there's a question of what do we do with that? We go out and we make a computation which makes it sound descriptive, but what do we do with the conclusion? So we go out, we make a computation, we make a conclusion. If that just comes right back to here again, then this was our population and we were doing descriptive work. But if you have your participants, which in this case up here would be the cows, I guess, and you collect data from them, and then you go and make a computation, and then you state your conclusion, but it gets expanded out to the bigger set surrounding this of all cows, then that becomes inferential. So do we just wrap that conclusion right back to where we got the data or do we expand it out to some bigger group? That's how you can tell the difference. You can't tell the difference just based on the computation. All right, so one more try at this. A gambler observes 100 plays of the game of roulette. He notices that the ball landed on a red number 48% of the time. State a conclusion that would make this a descriptive study and state a conclusion that would make this inferential statistics. So just think about the wording and try and see if you can fill those in. Pause the video and then come back and you'll see my answer. All right, so to make this just descriptive, we want to make sure that we only talk about the data that was collected, which was the 100 plays. So I would say for the 100 plays observed, the ball landed in a red slot 48% of the time. So I'm just talking about what I saw and I'm summarizing that as 48%. So there's 100 plays, but I'm giving one number to represent that. So there's the descriptive work being done, and it's not being expanded out. On the other hand, if we wanted it to be inferential, we would expand it out. So then we'd say something like, based on the 100 plays observed, we estimate the ball will land in a red slot about 48% of the time. There's quite a few things going on here. One, we're saying based on the 100 plays, so saying we're starting with that, but we're going to kind of expand it out. And then the ball will land, so we're not just thinking about the 100 plays we saw, but future plays as well. And then the other thing that's important to know is when you do inferential statistics and make an estimate, you'll probably get close to the right answer if you do all the work right. But even when the work's done right, you don't expect to get the answer perfect. So we would usually say approximately or about or something like that when we make our estimates. All right, that wraps up section 1.1.